listening to Screen View with Peter Van, Amy Morgan, and John Denny. Fan us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, or join in on the conversation on Google+. Hello and welcome to Screen View, episode 19, March 15th, 2012. Uh, John and Amy are here, and uh, we are on our new show. New, episode? new, episode? Yeah, new, new episode. episode? Yeah, new, new episode. episode. New episode. Anyway. It's the same show. Yeah, it's the it's same, the same show. show. Different episode. Surprise! Yeah, surprise. <laughs> uh, business, guys, uh, business. Uh, Apple TV was announced last week. We took a week off because... Yeah. Yeah, technical. I was having computer issues. Murphy's and Law I always screws up. Uh, yeah, but uh, Apple TV was announced last week, and uh, they now allow Netflix, so Netflix continues its domination, pretty much. Uh, yeah. Just subscribe <laughs> and uh, pay using your iTunes account every month, and uh, you're good to go. Uh, no matter what, no matter what other companies are going to do to compete with Netflix, Netflix is always going to be number one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, for the time too, being, yeah. It was. They were it's the first. Too late for. I mean, it's not like there's a new market where someone else is going to say, "Oh, I'm going to revolutionize what Netflix does," because right now there's not. Right. So. Right. Um, they've already got the streaming, so they've already got the DVDs. So all the other everyone else can do is just, uh, you know, Get copy on board that, and or copy up. that, and try to Sorry. offer it for cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. try to like copy as much as you can. You know. <laughs> Bribe, pay, kill, steal. Yeah. Mame. Business. Yeah. Mame. That's that right. Yeah, it's business. <laughs> exactly. Sounds like business to me. Um, Walmart is actually also on April 16th. They will start a service which will allow you to pay $2 per DVD or Blu-ray or $5 per DVD if you want to uh, upgrade uh, or convert a physical media DVD to a digital DVD. So you can uh, upload it onto their service. They will convert it for you for a fee, and then you can watch it digitally. No more discs required. Is this a DVD that I already own or a DVD that they are selling? Yes. You, you uh, Both. So you can pay okay. them $2 or $5 if you want to convert it into a $2 for standard definition digital conversion, $5 uh -huh. for high definition digital conversion. So let me just drop my mind around this. If I, if I don't have let's say, the artist on DVD, but I want it. Yeah. I go into a Walmart and say, hi, here's this brand new unopened copy of the artist, but I want it on digital. Here's $5. No. Is that the way it works? No, you have to oh. buy the disc. Well, then what's the point? You Well, they're, you're paying for them to convert your... I, you're not converting. What you're doing is... So what you're doing is you're showing, like, hey, I have this video... And uh, I want it converted, and then Walmart says okay, and then they green light it. They pretty much push it to your account. It's so it's bad. not, it's not a movie. I have to already own it. I I believe that you have to own it if you want this conversion, or you can just buy it off of. Uh, there's a they're using a service called Ultraviolet, which uh -huh. is a digital service. It's a uh, same. It's similar to like, um, you know, buying like the uh, the digital disc kind of thing. You know, like a digital copy version on it. But you have to actually have to prove that you have a, a, a real copy then. Like a yes. like oh here here I'm gonna bring in my I'm gonna bring in my complete collection of this and you're gonna give me a digital version because I am proving right now that I have this right here in my here my possession because it's in my hands. Yes. This sounds like something uh -huh. I know what it's going to do. This sounds like people who Actually let me let me correct that. It sounds like something that my parents are going to do. Yeah, it's similar to like when Best Buy charged people thirty dollars to pair their Bluetooth to their phone. Like a couple of years ago, my parents went through all their like, uh, what do they call it, Super Eight movies and converted it to DVD. Right. So it's like, well, now they can have it digitally. So, you know, they're going to convert these DVDs to digital. Yeah. I don't know. To me, it sounds pointless. They're, what I pay? They're gonna I already have to... own it. It's kind of weird because I'm like, okay, well, what happens if they don't have the license to sell one of these? Um, well, they, here's the, here's they the kicker. Do that? Because or they're Walmart. List? Yeah, because they're Walmart, they've partnered with Fox, Paramount, Sony, Universal, and Warner Brothers. Um, so it's like if you bring, you know, a Lionsgate film or something, like, nope, we can't do that. But let me, let me, let me like get that. this straight. I have a DVD that's a Blu-ray, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. I don't. But if I have a, a Blu-ray DVD... 
and a Blu-ray player and the highest high definition TV, I'm going to bring that to Walmart for five dollars so I can watch it on my computer. Yep. Congratulations. Huh. That sounds stupid. Wow. Yeah. Well. That could not okay. Sound well. Stupid. I mean, it's at to the point where it's like, wow, do you are you really that lazy that you can't you don't just I mean just rip it's it. It's not lazy. You're, it's more work. Well, it it is sounds more like work. to me that they're going to capitalize and make a lot of money if it's somebody that's like, oh, okay, sure, that sounds like a great idea. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to watch yes. movies on your computer, then you're just going to have a Netflix streaming account or something equivalent. Right. You're not going to. Uh, some people uh, are. Yeah, some people are a crazy. Stupid idea, and it doesn't make any sense. Like I unless said, they're people like you know me like, that have access to their own cloud account, and you know they don't want to have a disc; they just want to have it on their computer where they press a button, and then all of a sudden they can play whatever movie that's in their list. Exactly. I mean, I can it's understand why, but but there's the other, there's the other thing is. Why can't they just rip it themselves? <laughs> it's <laughs> like, 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 like the point that John was saying. It's it's for people like his parents that would okay. just be like, right. they don't know how to do things like no, that. Right. Like, yeah. it, my my mom's not gonna watch movies on her computer. She's got a TV. Don't come after me, FBI, please. Yeah. Well, it's it's on their it's on their account. It's like uh, apparently it is. They they bought Vudu as of recent. Which is a uh, online streaming movie service, so you can just you know watch it from an internet-enabled television or a computer or anything like that. So. Well, that was a really good discussion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you explained it to me because at first I was like, "Oh, that, may, that sounds like, that like sounds, a good I idea." I kind of don't get it. Yeah. I was like, no, 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 that sounds stupid. I don't know. It's still a dumb <laughs> idea because I've already bought that DVD. Why am I going to convert it? Like, well, that's why yeah. I was like. You know, you know, if I if I don't have the DVD and I go with my computer and say, "Hey, put this on my computer," here's five dollars. That sounds like you're buying DVDs for cheap. You you yeah, pay your I, DVD you know. to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you you must you know pay. You must own that DVD. You must have a physical version. Although you think about it, you could just like if I had a DVD and I wanted to give it to you guys, yeah. I would walk in, convert it, then give it to you, and then you'd convert it, and then you give it to them, and then they could. Right. Yeah, how you can't you know yeah what you know have a receipt with it as well. Yeah, yeah exactly. Purpose, it says this. Once really? you get it converted, couldn't you just? Who send does it to that? Me? Who saves all of their receipts? Who has like fifteen <laughs> you know movies or whatever you know got tons of movies and you're like okay I'm gonna have to prove it by giving your uh, giving you a receipt. Who has that? I don't know about you, but I keep all my receipts. <laughs> I don't. That's good tax accounting. <laughs> yeah, good tax accounting. Fifteen years, <laughs> baby. Like, if, if you I get CD put into a digital years, copy, I'm not gonna keep that receipt. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. If you get the DVD put into a digital copy, couldn't you just give it to me via electronic mail? No, because on it's it goes up to Vudu, which is their online streaming service. So you don't actually have it on your computer. Right. It's like a, it's like a DRM thing. So our uh, digital rights you management. You have to be a member of Vudu or whatever to get it. Yeah. That's even you. more stupid. Oh, okay. So it's it's connected to an account then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's okay. like a yeah, it's like a cloud service. It's their it's their cloud service. So Every time I ask more questions, cool. this gets a little more stupid. To me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so let's move on. So we don't. <laughs> let's continue. Oh, this is a really stupid conversation. Yeah. yeah, no, this is crazy, right? It's like when I first heard this a couple of days ago, I was like, this is a bad idea. Who's gonna do that? But you know, people are gonna be like, oh my god, Walmart, one stop shop. <laughs> It's talking about it. I guess it's not that dumb. Grab my diapers. Get a conversion of John Carter, which uh, bombed at the box office this past weekend. Um, it is a two. It was a two hundred and fifty million dollar. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. I am, and I'm not surprised that it caused that much money to make. It, well, I, when I didn't, when I didn't think about it. Yeah. And they, I heard two hundred fifty million dollars. I was like, wow, that seems like a lot. But then it's like. All the stuff going into it, and it's like, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So it was, no, it was $250 million to make. Another $100 million to um, to market or something like that. What? It was $100 million to market? Yeah, that it was, oh, my yeah. God. That movie was expensive. They made companion books. They made I, – I, the reason that oh, I no. went oh, – man. The, there were already books and stuff. I know, but they made like a companion book along with the movie. Hmm. So what happened was a, uh, um, uh, well, I, so it was so bad that it actually lost to the Lorax, which was in its second yeah. week 
And uh, that, wow. that movie already made all uh, 121 million as of Sunday, so it most likely made its money back by now. Wow! Uh, so John John Carter only made 30 million dollars. Which it's not is, finished yet. It's just it's the first week, right? right? Yeah, but it's, I mean, it's trending. It's got a long way to go. It's trending mm-hmm. to be very low. So, um, uh, Project mm-hmm. X. Uh, I heard, dollar. actually. I heard good things know, about it. I just haven't had a chance to go to the movie theater I for know, months. I into the John Carter thing a little bit, buddy. I have heard good things about it. Um, plus, I've, I've heard that uh, the fans of the series, of the books or whatever, are already petitioning for a sequel. Oh, wow. And petitioning hardcore for it. Yeah, I, I, I guess. I mean, it, I don't know. It sort of reminds me of the um, Chronicles of Narnia, I guess. Right, right. Uh, although I guess the first one made a lot of money, didn't it? It did. The but, but the, the second, second one, one did not, not make it. Right. Yeah. So the, so they, the yeah. they made a third one for some reason. Yeah, it was weird. It was really weird. But uh, the weirdest thing was that um, so. John Carter was uh, so they say that an, an analyst believes that Disney will probably write down a hundred million to one hundred and fifty million dollars, which be which would be uh, larger than uh, Mars Needs Moms, the Prince of Persia. You guys remember Mars Needs Moms? Amy does. Amy's like, yeah, I do. I, I saw that one. It was all right. Uh, the Prince of Persia, Sands of Time, as well as the Sorcerer's Apprentice. So. All three of those movies, which actually just came out in the past two years, were bombs, right? And a uh, hundred. So John Carter, Disney will probably have to run down a hundred to one hundred fifty million. Write down a hundred to one hundred fifty million dollars in losses. Um, the wow. film, the film spent about three hundred fifty dollars to make and market, and only took in thirty million dollars domestically over the week over the past weekend, and another oh. seventy million internationally. Hold on a second. So when you see when you see a movie, they say, okay, the Lorax up here says it costs seventy million dollars to make. Mm-hmm. If it only made back seventy million dollars, what did it lose? It, you know right. what I mean? it it would lose uh, marketing because that costs. doesn't factor in the, the marketing costs. No, it doesn't. It doesn't factor in anything but what it took to make the movie. Right. Correct. So, to, in order for a movie to be a financial success, it would have to make, you know. Whatever percentage above what it costs to make the movie, right? right. Now, why do they get these figures out? Then you know what I mean. It doesn't make any sense. These um, are not figures. I think it's just to show like the budget of the film, and it, it's a it's a good um, it's a good benchmark because so most people like us can sit on a podcast and say whether or not it's successful. Yeah, mo- most like, yeah. Or not. <laughs> but most but studios from, from a financial financial standpoint, like we here are both consultants. I, um, so like, we we look at a budget for a project. It's like okay, you, you factor in everything. This is not factor. This number, two hundred fifty million dollars, is not factoring in everything. So right. in, in actuality, it took three hundred fifty million dollars to make this movie. Right. Right. Because Ouch. marketing is part of the budget, whether they put it on there or not. Yeah, I think it's just a good. Uh, I think it's a good benchmark. A lot of companies don't don't want to tell you how much they spent to market it. I'm not sure why, but it's kind of hard to get that data, actually. Oh, I understand that. Um, I'm not like, sure why exactly. Probably so they can't really like, tell you the insane amount of money that they, you know, talked right. about it just the, the, to market it. Yeah. The top 10 most expensive movies to make in the last, you know, or, or I guess over, ever. Um, and it's surprising that Avatar was at the top of the list. Um, you know, yeah, yeah, it only cost you know two hundred twenty five million dollars to make this movie. Right. That's not true. Because whatever just because he didn't get funding from a studio doesn't mean that um James Cameron didn't put his own money into making whatever technology he had to make for that three D stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's true. Very it true. probably cost close to half a billion dollars to make that movie. You know what I mean? Right. But they're not that according to them, that's not their cost to make the movie. Yeah. Um, well, according to this uh, Hollywood Reporter article that we'll link to in the show notes, um, the film is expected to top 300 million in a, a worldwide, or possibly 350 million. Though its break-even point for Disney is probably closer to 650 million dollars. Uh-uh. Uh, what is it? Oh. So, 
so for like shipping and you know containers and people okay. and stuff like that. Uh, DVD and pay TV will help stem the bleeding, but a significant write off is inevitable. Yeah. Hmm. So it, it's, uh, definitely sucks because you know <laughs> I, I I the reason that I probably wasn't interested in seeing John Carter was because it was so pretentious. It was like. What? Okay. We spun. It's like we made, gave Avatar and Star Wars its start. I'm like, oh, oh I never heard that. Oh yeah, that was one of their yeah. like big marketing. Because it's like, a really old sci-fi book. Yeah, it's a really it's like a hundred some odd year old book. It's like from the early oh. 1900s. See, but, I I all I saw is what I saw just just the the trailer in itself, and that was it. And I thought, a oh, new, well, there's just, a new TV spot going around saying you know before I Star been Wars, TV. before Avatar, you know yeah. there was John Carter on Mars. Yeah, it's a really that. old. It's a really old sci-fi book that they made into a comic book. Wow. Yeah, that they made into a movie that flopped. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say because I haven't been watching TV. I've been too busy lately, so, so I haven't yeah. seen any of those. Yeah, it, it just felt so pretentious. I was like, I don't really want to watch this. Well, I guess you know if they ever Maybe listen to this book. podcast, I'll say, look, hey, all I care about is the fact that I saw the trailer and it, that hooked me. The, the you know so based off the strength of the trailer you didn't even have to oversell yourself yeah I'll I be, liked yeah it. I mean oddly like, enough hey. the 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 screen uh, the cinema score is, was a B plus so hmm. it did yeah. well it's oh, just yeah. nobody went to go see it, it hmm. um, well if they would pay to like watch my kids I totally would <laughs> exactly <laughs> they paid everything. that wouldn't help them make any money though yeah no no it would be three hundred fifty million and ten dollars yeah. It would be yeah, six hundred fifty million ten dollars. What's the ten dollars for? Write down for Amy Morgan's kids. <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, let's see. Next this this uh, this Friday, uh, Twenty One Jump Street comes out, and uh, in so it is a com- comedy remake of Twenty One Jump Street. I this TV show with Johnny yeah, Depp. TV show, yeah, with Johnny Depp. So that would be interesting, I suppose. Um, uh, another one that's coming out in limited release for now, I think. I don't know if it's going to expand at any point, but is uh, Casa de Mi Padre, which is uh, a Will Ferrell movie, which he learned to speak nothing but Spanish. So the entire oh, no. two hours of Will Ferrell will be Spanish. Pass. <laughs> Wonderful. As if yeah. there isn't any. Fantastic. I, yeah, I, I, I will pass on that one as well. I'm yeah. completely on board with that. Uh, 21 Jump Street got 80 has an 86 percent rating so far. I do want to see 21 Jump Street. Street. So it actually looks kind of it looks pretty funny. Um, Jonah Hill actually wrote it, so interesting. Um, but Casa de mi Padre actually is only 41 percent, which is actually not as bad as I thought it would be. Um, and thinly written and not as funny as it should be, as it needs to be. It would have worked better as a fake trailer or a short film. That's the consensus on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, a fake see. trailer. Yes, I think it probably would have done better. Um, all right, so we are since we took so much time talking about Walmart and Voodoo and stuff, we will jump right into uh, the sad trombone. Wah, wah, wah. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Amy's favorite show, <laughs> Terra Nova, has been canceled. Oh. Uh, but net, but there are. But there are reports that uh, possibility that Netflix may pick it up. Oh, so they continue recording and then they would just put it through Netflix? Yeah, yeah, apparently. Oh. I didn't know Netflix was doing that well. <laughs> uh, I mean, Netflix just spent a hundred million on House of Cards with Kevin Spacey, so there's a lot of there's a lot of names oh. and shows with the word oh. House. But anyway, starting uh, there, with there is. You're yeah, right, House. Uh, so yeah, Terra Nova canceled because it was uh, it apparently it made money for Fox, which we were talking about previously. It did make yeah. money. It yeah. can't sustain it though. But it cannot That's sustain. Yeah. And, there was and, and no that way was, that was going to sustain it. They actually had an interview with uh, with one of the with one of the head honchos at Fox Television. He said, pretty much in not so in much nicer words, he saw the second season and thought it was terrible. So he decided Aww. not to pursue it. Thought this this show was terrible. So he thought that it was not going to go the way it should have went. So hmm. he did not see a future, <laughs> and he let it go. He's like, I'm not going yeah. to. Do this uh, well, but, see if Netflix does it. Yeah, but uh, another Fox show, Alcatraz, which kind of replaced it. Actually, it did replace it more or less, right? Yeah, it uh, did. Uh, he's also in trouble. 
No, I we'll, like Alcatraz too. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, and uh, Luck, actually, the HBO series Luck, which actually just started uh, right after the holidays, has closed for good. Um, they were filming the second season. Yeah, they're already filming their second season, and uh, they closed it. What what they'll do with the second season episodes that have already been put in the can, nobody knows just yet. But uh, it wasn't. I don't think it was very many episodes. So maybe they'll just like tack it on to the end or something. Uh, yeah, I have to assume. Yeah, or they'll just, yeah. Or like they'll a, just do a they'll put final it on hurrah. And, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, and in case you in case you don't know, uh, there was a third. Uh, this is the uh, there was another uh, horse that died during production, and it was the third horse um, to have died. So, wow. Yeah. Like like. Like, like die, die. three horses on, wow. Yeah. Was it like they, they got in an accident or something, or it was just they overworked them? Or <laughs> um, it could be any of the above. They did not elaborate. It was. I actually read something about it. Was um, the horse like it, it got sick or something, so they had to put it down. It wasn't like it was. It yeah. was they were filming a race and it tripped and broke his leg. It wasn't something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, they were, um, yeah, they were saying, like, even though they tried their best to have the best conditions, some of them got sick and stuff like that. So. And it's definitely a hard show. It's definitely hard it's to not, have a sustained show, right? It's not, it's not as it's though kind of, it's anything due to, to animal cruelty because the, the, the head writer on the show was, like, a, a horse owner. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense to me that, like, hey, you know, it, it, horses are not that fragile. I mean, come on. But, you know, maybe they just have a lot of bad luck on a show called Luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is what I thought it was kind of the funny. irony of it all. Yeah, it's very ironic. It's sad and ironic. Um, uh, so John, you should be pretty happy. Uh, Justified got its uh, fourth season last week. So uh, yeah, after that. after this season, it should uh, continue to be good, uh, very good. Um, and also, the missing premiered tonight. I saw it. Um, I don't know if it's that good or not. It's kind of interesting to see Ashley Judd beat the crap out of people. It's, you know, like we were saying before, it's taken with Ashley Judd and a son instead of a daughter. Um, but uh, let's see here. And a girl instead of a guy beating people up. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So it's like a complete role reversal. <laughs> yeah, completely. Wait, I missed that. What's a role reversal? The missing. Oh, Ashley yeah. Ashley Judd, Yeah. She's kicking can instead of um, Liam Nielsen. Yeah. Well, so. here's the problem with that. What? How long is she gonna have to run after her son? It is a yeah. ten episode season, and yeah, uh, that's the, fine. But like, is she gonna find her son at the end of the season? Yes. The 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 creator promised that there would be an end, and uh, it would set up. And if they if it was picked up for second season, they would somehow set it up to do something else instead. So of, in other words, it'd be like the life. In, you know the life of somebody else then it'd be you know this yeah. one's going to be about Ashley Judd the next one would be somebody else so every season would be right. maybe a different like you know dirt dude or dudette that yeah. has to or or Ashley Judd is high she starts her own private security firm and then she helps find people yeah, yeah but there's that too where's the okay. the drama for her you know what I mean for her for not, right right it would just be a job for it her, would, as it would, opposed to, yeah. it's my son, I have to go find my son, right. I'm going to do anything The together. passion behind it would be different. Right. Yeah. Instead of being highly serialized, like this show is, it would be a episodic show. Right. It would change. Um, but, you know, they, like, the, the, yeah, like the guy said, the, the creator said, he said, I will end the season. It will end, without a cliffhanger. Um, it's probably going to end anyway. Right. Who knows? <laughs> um, so... Let's see here. So uh, other than a couple of really bright spots on uh, on uh, the Freshman series, where our topic this week is uh, to talk about the blight of the Freshman series. Um, a lot of shows, uh, especially this season, rather than – I mean, last season was kind of bad, but this season was actually pretty, pretty, pretty bad as far as I can remember. Um, a lot of shows got canceled within, you know, the first week or the second week. Of when yeah. they aired, uh, like uh, you know, for Fox, Alan Gregory, you know, Alan Gregory and Terry Nova lasted. At least they ran through the, all of their episodes. Alan Gregory didn't. I think it did. I think it ran through its, all of its episodes. Did it only have three episodes? Oh, did it get canceled after three? I thought it was yeah. Like a little it wasn't on for very long. Oh, what did they replace it with? Just like reruns of 
Cleveland. Yeah, show? they would play. Would probably what they did before is they would play last week's Simpsons. Oh. Or Maybe. last week's Family Guy or whatever. Um, a couple shows that got canceled really, really quickly were uh, actually the ABC shows, which is uh, Man Up, which actually was pretty good. It ran for six episodes, was good. Uh, yeah. Charlie's Angels and Work It only lasted two episodes, I think. I thought it didn't even make it out the starting gate before people were saying it's going to get canceled. Oh, yeah. I mean, I called it, <laughs> and then said, yeah. like a week or I think all of us said that, ah, oh, that sounds like crap, man. We were all hoping <laughs> for it. Yeah. And, and another show, actually CBS, which is known for having really good shows, um, and they last for quite a while. Uh, How to Be a Gentleman actually only lasted about a week or two, and then they burned it off on a Saturday. They yeah, moved it to a Saturdays in- immediately. They're really, they're really good about their dramas. Yeah, that's true. Um, Although, I mean, the sitcoms do really well, but you know, for them to to only lose one sitcom, yeah, from all their new shows, it's yeah, not so bad. That's true. Um, NBC had uh, three shows that were canceled relatively early: Free Agents, Prime Suspect, and The Playboy Club. Um, and then uh, CW had Hater, which is some like weird show. I don't know. Anyway, uh, but you were yeah, saying about... Yeah, it was a bad idea to begin with. Yeah. Hater. Show, wasn't it? Uh, what's that? I didn't yeah. ever see it. It was that one where they had, like, um, it was like uh, they, uh, a fan has to confront their, like... Yeah, the Not celebrity. a fan, but, like, that, that hates on a certain celebrity was supposed to end up getting face-to-face and having the, yeah. you know... Yeah, it was, it was a stupid... Yeah. Get there. <laughs> Uh, it, yeah, it's interesting Come that on. you say about dramas, John, because uh, CBS debuted two new dramas, which was uh, Unforgettable, which is The Female Mentalist, and then uh, Gifted Man, which is a male version of um, The Ghost Whisperer. And they I actually both... saw a couple of episodes of Unforgettable. And it's not it so bad. I mean, it's, it's, it's like uh, it's run-of-the-mill CBS, right? Yeah. Yeah, which is like yeah. Okay. Actually, I saw a couple episodes of um, um, what was the one he said? A gifted man. No, 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 no. The uh, Simon Baker, is that his name? The guy, unforgettable. You compared it to another show? Oh yeah, uh, the 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 male ver- the female version of mentalist. the mentalist. The yeah. mentalist, yeah. The, the mentalist is actually pretty good. The serious version of. Mm-hmm. The, and I, I was like, I was watching the one episode of The Mentalist, and I was like, that girl looks really familiar. And it turns out she was on in Empire Records. Oh, the one cop lady. And I was like, wow, she looks so different. <laughs> Empire Records is an old movie, isn't it? Yeah. Have you seen? Have you guys seen it? Uh, the like. I so. Oh, you've never seen it. I it's a good movie. I, I might have. I, I believe I did. It's, 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 it, you should watch it only because it's like, you know. It's about records. Yeah. No, it's about a record <laughs> store. Um, but it's like, it's got all the different personalities from like when we were younger. Oh, God. You know, like. I I have seen this movie. I have seen this movie. Yeah. So, the one one of the girls from that show is on The Mentalist. Oh, okay. And she looks so grown up and different. <laughs> I mean, it's 17 years later. So. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so NBC also has a couple shows which are bad. Uh, not doing very well. Are you there, Chelsea and The Firm? Um, which the Firm is not doing well. I thought it was canceled. I think they're. I think they're burning it off. I don't think they. Uh, I don't think they officially canceled it yet. I think they moved it to Saturday. So it's. Oh, uh, the kiss of death. Good it's on its way out already. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Remember and, uh, when Saturday it wasn't yeah. the king of kiss of death? Remember when like Walker Texas Ranger was on Saturdays and Baywatch and Baywatch. And, and they were like uh, they were killing it on Saturday nights. And uh, who's that other show too? I forget. Nash Bridges, I think, was on Saturdays. That no, Saturday. that was always on a Monday. Really? Oh, okay. mm. Yeah. Well, regardless, that was like Saturdays were like yeah like, bitching in the '90s, but now I guess they're pretty terrible. Um, but uh, the, back to the CBS really quick. They picked up 18 shows this week, or yes, today actually. CBS picked up 18 shows oh. today. Unforgettable, Gifted Man, and a couple of the CSI shows that are not CSI Las Vegas were not part of that pickup, so they could be in, they could be in trouble. Wait, CSI was CSI Las Vegas is not picked up. CSI Las Vegas was picked up, but Miami and uh, New York were not picked up. I don't know. What are the internet memes going to be? They always make fun of the guy from CSI Miami. Oh yeah, the Horatio Horatio. 
Yeah. The white, the white guy with red hair, who's named Horatio. Yeah, that's really Horatio cool. Sands. That's, Horatio Sands. That's a completely different guy. It's <laughs> a completely different guy. I apologize. Uh, so uh, Fox has uh, the Finder, which has already been canceled, I believe. Close to it, pretty much. They're burning it off, and then they're just going to stop doing it after that. Um, and uh, Alcatraz. So. Uh, eat your... yes. I want to yeah. see the end of that. Yeah, I know. It's kind of a uh, well. The Alcatraz is going to end. They're going to finish their season. They're going to finish. It makes me angry. Oh, okay. There are all these shows that are like in danger or not getting picked up or getting canceled or whatever, and they're they're putting put on other days. I liked a show a few years ago called The Black Donnellys, yeah. and. They didn't move it to a different day. They just took it off the air. They just stopped airing it. <laughs> wow. After episode, uh, what was it, six? Like, no, it was earlier than that, I think. I, I, all I remember is that you had to go online onto their website. They would debut one every week. To see it? Yeah, they would show wow. one every, they would debut one every week. I just bought the DVD. The DVD Did season. you actually watch the whole thing? Not yet. Oh, God. <laughs> I have it, though. Never, never did. Whenever uh, you just find absolutely nothing to watch, you're going to break down yeah. and watch the rest That's of That's not going to happen because John hasn't watched <laughs> any of the finale. But after I watch Alias. Yeah, after he watches all five seasons of Alias once again and the <laughs> other like 10, se- ten seri- seasons of uh, That 70s Show and all those other I've seen every episode of That 70s Show. <laughs> oh, really? The last you, actually waited, you actually watched that till the bitter end? <laughs> except for the last one. I've never seen the last one. See? Episode. See? <laughs> never actually finished the series. It's terrible. Uh, it's still going on in my mind. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> the, greatest, I mean, the greatest show ever. So I guess there's a couple bright spots and such, but uh, what, do, what do you guys? Surprised. Yeah, two, two of the ones on here are ones I'm still watching too. Yeah, they're actually you know they're pretty good shows. But uh, so Amy, I, I know you, you you might have uh, you might have a eulogy set up for Terra Nova. Oh, uh, I I thought about it, but all I really it? did was just um, downloaded. <laughs> All of the episodes and watch them again. Oh, do you do you have a quick little word before we send off Terra Nova? To oh, Terra Nova! How short of a time we knew thee. I still want to know what was going on in the Badlands. In the Badlands. <laughs> At the very end, they find this thing in the Badlands, and it makes you wonder, what the heck? <laughs> and then it ends, and you're like, oh. And I'm like, like, crap, now I'm never going to find out what was in the Badlands. And then I'm never going to find out whether or not that lady ever goes back and sees her daughter again. Gah! If it's any consolation, my mom is still upset that she has no idea how Terminator ended. Oh. The Connor Chronicles. Oh, she does it? Oh, yeah, yeah, that was <laughs> crazy. Was a huge, there was a huge cliffhanger, and then that they canceled it. insane. Oh. That ended so insanely. See, I have, that's one I haven't seen the end of. I've got it. I just haven't watched the rest of it. Which one? Oh, Which dang. one did you see it? Oh, the Terminator? Sarah Connor. Yeah, yeah that Sarah was Connor's insane. I saw it, and then they're like, yeah, it's canceled. And I was like, oh, come on. I have a question. Sir. You guys, work, you guys both watch Person of Interest, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm watching it, yeah. I saw a commercial for that show for, I guess, a recent episode. Did it jump the shark? Because it seemed like a comical episode where he had to, like, watch a little girl or something. Oh. Hmm. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm behind, like, three like, episodes. This is a serious show. Like, this, 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 cartoon, this commercial for it looks like it's, like, Benny Hill all of a sudden. No, no, no. They did, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't as bad as you think. Um, but uh, I have a high sure. tolerance for jumping the shark, for shows to jump the shark. Um, like, uh, there's this one season of 24 that after like 13 episodes of the same crap over and again, I'm like, okay, this show is done. But, uh, no, I don't think, I don't think it jumped the shark. I think there was, there was a valid reason for what, you know, about why they had the baby and stuff like that. Then it was just the way that they portrayed it in the commercial. Yeah, I think they tried to make it a little funnier or something like that. I don't know why, but, uh, um... Yeah, no, I don't think it jumped the shark yet. Okay. Maybe they're trying to appeal to another, to more people in the audience or something. Yeah, they're trying. It was to, a test. They're trying to appeal to people who are not ninety years old and sitting in front of the camera. <laughs> um, but so I don't know. This is just—it's just so sad that fresh the freshman TV this season has just been so bad. Um, I think that um, because we're 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 doing this podcast and we're looking into it. It seems more magnified. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
I think next year it'll seem like it's the same. And probably if you look at, like, last year's stats, it'll probably look the same. Um, there are, uh, like, a variety of, like, you know, there are so many pilots that get put on the air and just never make it. Um, right, there are many that get, yeah, there are many that get produced and then they just never make it, right. I mean, for instance, talking about that 70s show, there was, like, 15, not 15, but there was, like, eight or nine shows that Fox had put on. And that 70s show was the only one to make it past the first season mm-hmm. in 1998. So it's like, you know, it's not a new trend. No. Um, I think that back then they were more willing to stick with shows that weren't doing so well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, further back, obviously, um, Cheers was a terrible show the first year. Didn't do well at all in the ratings. Right. Seinfeld and as well, right? Seinfeld as well. So I think that, you know, back then they were like, you know what, we'll just put it on a different night and see if it works out. And they have faith in their programming. Mm-hmm. Um, nowadays it's like, you know, why have faith when there's a, a zillion other shows that we could just throw up there and see what sticks. Right. Yeah, that's what and it if, seems like, yeah. If we can't find anything that works, then we'll just have a reality show yeah. to put on. Because next next month, actually, in April, they're debuting even more shows. Like, uh, really? Yeah, there's... They're, uh, I don't have them offhand right now, but like ABC. Oh, speaking of, I don't know why you just said what you said reminded me of it, but um, they canceled the Twenty Four movie. Oh. Yeah, and no. Kiefer, or Fox, Fox, shut it down. Huh. And Kiefer uh-huh. Sutherland is pissed. I bet, because that's like you know, I'm sure that he'd love to do one. <laughs> I know because you said there were new shows to view next month, and it made me think of the show that he has coming out, Touch. Yeah. And I read an article that said that they had ceased production on uh, the 24 movie. Wow, that's crazy. That's hmm. crazy. Yeah. Oh, uh... Well, maybe enough people will just get upset and, like, you know, uh oh, about it, that they'll just, like, okay, packs. maybe we'll revisit that. <laughs> mail jackpacks to Fox, because I, I was going to say they're going to mail them something else, but, you know, that would be dangerous. Um, I'm okay with it not being a movie. I, yeah. Actually, I, when we, we my, told my husband about that, he was like, how are they going to do that? Because it's like supposed to be 24 hours. Like Every episode is an hour in the 24 yeah, hours. That, how that are they, they going to do that do in a movie? Is they would probably do something that's like... Uh, you have... They, they would do some background and they would say, "You there's two hours to do this. And then the two hours would be in real time. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So... Um, According to Entertainment Weekly, uh, worries about the budget and timetable has prompted 20th Century Fox to postpone production on a 24 movie this year. The film that would feature mm-hmm. Kiefer Sutherland reprising his beloved Jack Bauer role was set to commence this month, but the actor reportedly balked at his $1 million payday, according to Deadline. Uh, apparently, the studio would like to keep the budget at roughly $30 million, while Sutherland and producer Brian Grazer were hoping for something north of $45 million. Um, oh wow! So, so I mean, the film didn't even have a director yet, mm. so it's not like it's. Well, and um, it, it's not like they can't. You know, they just said for this year it's it's done. So who knows? Yeah. Maybe you know next year. So they canned it for this year, but uh, it, it's kind of crazy that. Uh, I'm not. I'm not gonna hold my breath. I mean, no. it's. I mean, the further that it gets away from it, the easier it is for them to just say, you know what, we'll just forget it for now. We'll yeah. we'll get back yeah. to it. Yeah. And then they turn around one day, and Kiefer Sutherland is 60 years old. And he's oh, not whoops. Jack Bauer anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Yeah. He's it, Jack Bauer's dad. He's <laughs> Jack Bauer's dad. Yeah, it's definitely. Uh, I mean, it, it could pull a uh, an Arrested Development. You know, Let's see if that if maybe that'll happen. But who knows? Who maybe. knows if that'll ever happen? But uh, okay, so so sad trombone for you know Terra Nova yeah. and all the freshman dramas that we may or may not have liked. Um, I still don't get why Whitney is a bright spot. The show is it stinks oh, out loud. It got picked up. It got picked up for another season. So it stinks out loud. It stinks it's out terrible. loud. Yeah. It stinks out loud. Yeah, uh, a couple bright spots though. We didn't want to and we can up on it a high note. Uh, ABC had a really good series which is uh, Once Upon a Time. Um, yes, I w- I'm surprised to actually see this because I'm like it's not bad but it's like it's had a kind of a slow burn as it, that's been going. Yeah, it, but, it actually yeah. It, it's been doing really well in the ratings. So it hasn't been officially picked up yet, but most people are saying that it's most likely will get picked up because it's just 
it's actually one of the surprises of the season. Um, yeah. It received lukewarm, uh, you know, I, you know, like lukewarm reviews during the Television Critics Association when they went through that. Um, but uh, it, pick, it, you know, when it debuted, it did really well. People like it. It's a good stories, and they're they're running pretty strong. Uh, Goes to show that continuity and you know tying things in from like loved you know fairy tales from you know years and years and years actually does break in. Then I guess hey. <laughs> Uh, also, CBS, you know, Person of Interest and Two Broke Girls already got picked up, I believe. Person of Interest, uh, I believe, got officially picked up today, but uh, Two Broke Girls was picked up a long, long time ago. Yeah. Uh, so was Fox's New Girl, which was picked up a long time ago. NBC's oh, wow. Whitney was picked up a long time ago. Up All Night was picked up a long time ago. And Grimm and Smash. Every time I think I, I hear the word Smash, I think of Hulk Smash. Completely, I think of completely different. I don't think of a, of a movie or. You know, a movie smash or Broadway smash. I think of smashing stuff or some other stuff. Um, just not. Anyway, apparently they're doing really well in ratings. Um, so they will probably get picked up. Um, but uh, I'm surprised that that's doing well. I didn't think it would smash. Last. Yeah. I think hmm. people are clamoring for a new musical because Glee has kind of fallen off by the wayside. It's uh, not doing very well in ratings or anything. Uh, it's not at least it's not the darling as it used to be so people are just like oh an adult glee let's go check it out Piss. that's what it kind of looks like it was adult glee yeah. Exactly. yeah that's pretty much what they marketed themselves as um but okay so uh i hope you guys have uh what do you guys just really quickly what do you guys think of men in black three I haven't seen anything about it. Franchise. I I haven't either, okay. unfortunately. So I saw of, your yeah. trailers and I went, oh, I wonder if I can just kind of look at it. I, I, no, I, could I heard I that could. the trailer looks really good, but I don't know anything it, about it. It's weird because uh, they did definitely cast, they cast Josh Brolin. So what happens is it's time traveling. So uh, Will Smith goes back into time uh, to find... Uh, um, whoa, whoa, whoa. T. I buy the aliens, but time travel? Yeah, I know, right? So they find, uh, what's his name? T, right? What's his name? Whatever. K. 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 Uh, no. Back in time in like the 60s. So it's Josh Brolin. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Which is like, it, for, it fits perfectly. It's uh, Josh Brolin works. But uh, yeah. I don't know about that one yet. Um, that's speaking of dead franchises, right? Um, and yeah. then uh, another new trailer for Battleship 3, which is Aliens meets Top Gun, I guess. Yeah, both of us were shaking our head at the same time. No, please, Battleship, really? But it is a piece. Where is Aliens in Battleship? I know. I used to play this board game, and I don't really call it. Oh, Aliens. Oh. I didn't know I was an alien when I was directing the attacks on these ships here. Yeah, neither did I. Um, but it is a Peter Berg movie who actually did um, uh, Three Kingdom, I think. The Kingdom, I believe. It, it seems like to me that it no, should be one of those like like Zathura or um, you know one of those type of things where it's a game you know what was yeah. it uh, the other one was um, Jumanji like something Jumanji like that Jumanji. where they have like kids playing a war battleship and something happens and they're you know well, like, it's real or something there's I, no way I, that, that, that like, I would get it this is a game that can't there's no plot there's no yeah. like beginning middle end it's just there you have five ships and i have five ships and we aim rockets at each other and try to hit them yeah, yeah. well yeah it, it definitely makes less sense than in a ouija movie which they will come out with <laughs> yeah they, i saw well. that uh so the peter berg film that i was thinking of was called the kingdom which was a jamie fox uh yeah. jennifer garner uh chris cooper movie that came out that was a good movie actually it was actually a really good movie so you know action wise i would uh i would not say something bad about it but uh oh. story wise maybe who knows? When does oh. it come out? Battleship comes out later this year, like in the summer, because like what time in the summer? Like if it's in July, I'll be like, oh, popcorn movie. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a popcorn movie for sure. Oh, okay, good. Um, you just put me on the spot, and I don't. Sorry, the, uh... I didn't mean to put you on the spot. No, it's okay. It's all right. I don't want to get put. No, it's uh, it comes out on May 18th. So. Oh, okay. Just before everything really. It's gonna get. Off, it's but, gonna get yeah. overshadowed by the Avengers. Yeah. yeah. Because that's what yeah. we're gonna go see. Uh, all right, so that's uh, I believe that is a good spot to end the show for this week. Uh, we'll be back next week, hopefully. To uh, we we will discuss uh, the Walking Dead finale, which is next week, which is this next Sunday. Nice. A lot of stuff to talk about. So we will uh, for John, Denny, and Amy Morgan. Uh, we will see you next week. Bye bye.